If two pieces of metal touch in space, they will melt together and become one. It's something called cold welding or contact welding. This doesn't happen on Earth because the atmosphere puts a layer of oxidized material between the surfaces which makes the welding process impossible. This might seem like it would be a big problem for satellites, space stations and the like, but because the metals come from Earth, they're already coated with the material. In fact, the only evidence this process actually takes place have come from controlled experiments deliberately designed to provoke it. Most of us think we know the planets of our solar system. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. We also have Pluto, but sadly as of 2006, it's no longer classified as a planet. Instead, it's now a member of the new dwarf planet category. But, what if I told you that Pluto is not the only dwarf planet? For example, there's Ceres, Eris, Makemake, Haumea, Sedna, Orcus, Quawar, Exion, Verona, Chaos and many more which has not been given any official names yet. Ceres is especially interesting as it's orbiting the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. When you mention black holes, the first thing people often imagine is something like this. An almost two-dimensional disc-shaped object that pulls everything in on one side with nothing appearing on the other. This is of course all thanks to the interpretations of black holes by popular sci-fi movies and TV shows. In reality, a black hole is not much unlike a star or planet in the sense that it's actually a sphere with an immense gravitational field that pulls everything in from all directions. The sun, you, you know that thing that's keeping you alive and shit, is actually not yellow. It only appears yellow because of the Earth's atmosphere. In reality, the sun outputs all colors in the visible spectrum at almost an equal intensity, which means the true color of the sun is actually white. The tagline, in space, no one can hear you scream, from the movie Aliens from 1979 is entirely true as sound waves cannot travel in a vacuum. Sound waves, unlike radio waves for example, needs particles to travel through. But if you, you ever find yourself in space, with a spacesuit, with a friend in another spacesuit, and you realize that your radios isn't working, I mean, we're, we're all gonna end up in that situation at some point. There's another way to communicate, by bumping our helmets against one another. When the helmets touch, they act as a bridge for the sound waves to travel through, and so you'd be able to talk naturally without using any radios or anything else. And by naturally, I mean screaming like you've gone insane. Stars can be freaking weird. For example, there's a star out there with the memorable name of WISE 1828-2650. But it's not the name which is interesting, rather how cold it is. It's what's called a brown dwarf star and it's the coldest star ever found with a temperature range of minus 23 to 127 degrees Celsius. Yeah, a star that can be colder than you are. Another weird star is BPM 37093. Gotta love these names. But the star's core is made of diamond. 10 billion trillion trillion carats of diamond to be precise. And neutron stars is even weirder. Neutron stars are so dense that a single teaspoon of its material would weigh over 100 million tons. Alien life is bound to exist somewhere in the universe, but so far there's no evidence of that. At least not that the public know of anyway. However, what we do know is that there are planets out there that has the possibility to sustain life. So-called habitable exoplanets. So far we've found around 50 such planets, with some being as close as only 20 light years away. But as of yet, we have no way of confirming if these planets actually do support life, only that they have the unique attributes to possibly do so. 
In April 2010, radio astronomers reported an unknown object in the galaxy M82. The object had, seemingly out of nowhere, started sending out strange radio waves, which did not look like anything seen anywhere in the universe before. There have been several theories about the nature of this unknown object, but currently, no theory entirely fits the observed data. Did you know that our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is right now colliding with another, much smaller galaxy? Well, well it is. The galaxy is known as Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy and is currently about 70,000 light years away from Earth. But no worries, it's very unlikely that a star or a planet will crash into one another as they're separated by many light years of empty space. The same thing will happen in a few billion years from now when the Andromeda Galaxy will collide with our own and will create a much larger Milky Dromeda Galaxy. UY Scotty is so far the largest star found. If it was placed in the center of our solar system, it would engulf every planet all the way out to Jupiter. IC1101 is one of the largest known galaxies in the universe. It holds around 100 trillion stars. To put that in perspective, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, only contains a measly 400 billion stars. But the absolute largest and most massive object in the observable universe was discovered in November of 2013. It's called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. The structure is a so-called galactic filament, or in other words, a huge group of galaxies assembled by gravity. The structure is so huge that scientists can't even explain its existence. It's 10 billion light years away, which means that we see the structure as it was 10 billion years ago, and the universe is only about 13.7 billion years old. That means the structure had a little more than 3 billion years to form, which scientists say is just not possible. For comparison, our own solar system took around 4.6 billion years to form. The structure is basically too large to exist. 